Welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 28 today, verses 36 to 38, as we're continuing verse by verse on our way through. You shall also make a plate of pure gold and shall engrave on it like the engravings of a seal, holy to the Lord. You shall fasten it on a blue cord and it shall be on the turban. It shall be at the front of the turban. It shall be on Aaron's forehead and Aaron shall take away the iniquity of the holy things which the sons of Israel consecrate with regard to all their holy gifts and it shall always be on his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. Okay, we're going through the, all the instructions Moses has given about making the Wilderness Tabernacle, Wilderness Sanctuary, and all the different pieces of furniture in it, so how it's going to be all set up, the priesthood. And we've come into these uh, more recent chapters where we're dealing with all the uh, God is laying out, the symbolism, the garments, which of course are laced with all kinds of representations. And we come now to the headpiece, and there is a hat, so to speak, that the high priest wears. And on the front of that hat, there is a plate of solid gold. We're just reading about that right here at verse 36. And on that plate, it says, Holy to the Lord, Kadosh Dal Adonai. And so we have this extraordinary uh, thing that at the forehead, just as where also in the Bible we read about the mark of the beast and the seal of God in Revelation 13 and in Ezekiel 9 and different places in the Passover. In fact, there's symbolism there uh, for marking the blood. The blood goes over the doorpost and the death angel passes by and people are preserved from dying. There's all these kind of symbolisms uh, all represented through there about these two different things, which isn't our topic, but the mark of the beast versus the seal of God. The mark of the beast is kind of a a final uh, coercion the devil puts on people, and the seal of God is a sealing into uh, God's whole order and how God does things. And so, uh, there's a, a, a God's Ten Commandment law is is lived out in the life. Now here we have the high priest in the sanctuary, and he is wearing on his turban a notice that says, you know, holiness to the Lord, holy to the Lord. And of course, that's fitting because the high priest is standing for all Israel. He's going to make atonement for them. He is bearing their sin into the sanctuary. It is being, so to speak, recorded there. And then at the, once a year, it is the sanctuary is cleansed. The sin is removed. And of course, these are all pictures leading up to a final removal of all sin from God's people. So very interesting business here that the high priest has in his forehead Holy, holy to the Lord. When you go to Revelation 14, verse 1, what do you find? You find Jesus standing on Mount Zion, the Lamb. He's represented as the Lamb. With him, 144,000 having their father's name in their, having his father's name in their forehead. And so the high priest, look at all the, all these pieces all go together, see. So here is, it's made of solid gold. There's no, uh, there's nothing else. It is there and it has a lot of meaning for us. Let's notice something here that's quite important and that's found at verse 38 and we just read it already. But it says, this will be on Aaron's forehead, he's the high priest, and he shall, it shall take away, Aaron shall take away the iniquity of the holy things from the sons of Israel, which the sons of Israel consecrate with regard to all their holy gifts. And it shall always be on his forehead, how often always be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. The holiness of the high priest is a critical piece. Uh, Jesus had to live without sinning to be our great high priest. The book of Hebrews places him as our ultimate, as the ultimate, the real deal, the ultimate high priest. These Levitical high priests, they are pointing to, they are symbolic of, they represent the true, final, real deal, Jesus is coming, but they they are an important part of what God is doing, but he's setting this all up. Notice here what we just noticed that that uh, this holiness must always be there lest they die. And God, when he seals his people at the end of time, uh, they have chosen holiness. They've chosen to become like Jesus. It is a permanent selection. Revelation 22, verse 11, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. You can study that. But there is a, a period of time where uh, everything is finished. Everything is locked in. People's choices are, are confirmed. And we want to be right, like uh, have the Father's name, uh, character written in our foreheads. And so th from the high priest here, this, this picture is, is back in Exodus, the same picture found in Revelation. Uh, there's a lot of lots of uh, threads running between those two bits. So yes, we must have a high priest who is sinless, who uh, is uh, victorious over sin. We must have a high priest who cleanses us from all sin, blots out our sin completely. And 
Uh, here, Aaron is the high priest. He's a, a uh, human representation of that. Jesus, of course, is human. He's 100% human, but he's 100% divine also. Jesus is our great Melchizedek high priest. He does take away our sin completely, utterly, totally, finally, uh, total removal. And so the, this high priest here is representing Jesus, who truly uh, does all for you and I. Beautiful pieces and uh, lace throughout the sanctuary, the tabernacle business, as we study the Bible. It's all there, all brother and sister. Uh, there, there, there's beautiful pieces here for us. May we have holiness to the Lord in our mind, on our forehead. May we be right with him and let him continue to transform us. Let's be transformed and not conformed. Revelation, or rather Romans 12, verses one and two. The world would squeeze us into its shape, but Jesus would, would love to transform us. Let's cooperate with him and let him do it. See you tomorrow morning as we continue to study this business in Exodus 28. Thank you.